All right, hope everyone's having a uh, great evening. So anyways, before I start this video over today, I want to talk about the daily chart. And it, as you can see, this happens a lot. We had a, a small double top in a tight trading range right through here. And I'm going to make that back tower. There we go. We see we got a double top here. And a lot of times when you get double tops in tight trading ranges, more on, you know, pick a number, maybe 50% of the time, they can be, uh, they can lead to, you know, a big reversal. And a lot of times how it happens is you get these second leg traps. And, you know, that's, it's ultimately, you've heard Al say it, reversals lead to trading ranges. And that's because a lot of times in a trading range, you get a second leg trap. So, at first, when we were over here, everyone was thinking, you know, is this is this the start of the first leg, and then we get a second leg down, or is it leg one pullback, leg two, and a second leg trap, and then we immediately got this. Well, very disappointing, probably sideways for at least 10 bars. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, here's 15-ish bars. Well, anyways, we broke below that low today and reversed up sharply, but look over here. We've got a bear breakout disappointing tail and then a doji you know and then we tried to break below this you know this trend line over here somewhere over here and anyways then we vacuum down the open but if you look we went below this low this low was 1050 so 2110.5 this low was 2107.75 so we didn't even go three points below this low and then immediately turned up Trading range price action. Now, because of this big tail on the top, it makes me think that we're more likely going to test back down. Uh, if we would have closed all the way up here, I'd have been less certain. But, you know, trading range price action, the bears are disappointed by the sharp rally, but the bulls are disappointed by the big tail on top. So, what do I think is going to happen tomorrow? What I think is going to happen tomorrow is I think we're going to get a bear bar or a really, really small bull bar. Reason for that? Look at all stop entries besides this one, you know, up here. Look at most stop entries in a tra in the tight trading range. Most of them fail. Weekly chart so far outside down, but it does not look like we're going to close below this low. And we probably will not tomorrow, so more tight trading range, more disappointment. Monthly chart, you know, still a waste, you know, halfway through the trading trading month. I think we'll get back down to this low. Let's look at the day session. So I lost a lot of my lines. I forgot to save. My computer crashed and I forgot to save TradeStation and it reverted back to its original save. But anyways, if we just look at the day. Whole. Yeah, I'm not even gonna deal with that. So let's look at a, a take always in first. So for always in, you know, always in short on the open, but a doji. So you know we may have to test down to 2110.5, which is you know right here. And that and that's that vacuum bar. It's testing the low on the daily chart that I showed a few minutes ago. So always in gap down. So 50-50 chance in general. We sell off for an hour and then test the open of the day, which is kind of what we did today. But Doji bar one, tail on bar two, tail on bar three. I think I still think we'll get to the bar one low at some point because you'll have bulls who will buy this low and buy more from lower or above the bull bar. And they'll probably make money. You know. So tails, tails, bad follow through. Then we got a bit of breakout, but more bad follow through. And if you were in the trading room, you heard Al say, at this moment, you know, strong bear, you know, strong move down, you know, a lot of bear bars, but 
there's no consecutive strong bear plugs. If you look, this is the only decent bear bar of the day. So it's not really that strong. Then we got our second leg down right here. And you can see so many bears wanted out at this close that we went down and reversed up immediately. So here's a decent buy. So always then bears, maybe they sell on this close stop up here. But if they do, they get out above. If not, especially maybe on this close, I'd get out above here for the simple reason of this. Ask yourself this question. So what's more likely? Right now, you buy this, you buy above this bar, and you put a target at the lower bar one, betting we get back to it. Your risk is down here, so this is the one to one risk reward. If I put my stop here, and I buy right here, you know the probability is probably sixty percent that we'll get up to here before down to there. If I am willing to, you know, buy this low or this close, it's probably better. So, you know, probably not a lot. Sorry, probably not a lot more down when you get to this area. Then we rallied. So weak move down. You don't want to see this many bull bars. Low one short at support at major support. Probably going to fail. Turn up. So always in. Bears are short. They got to get out. You know, theoretically they sell again below a bear bar, but I would not hear. You know, maybe they do here, but again, a lot of bull bars probably second leg up. You know, we may very reasonable at least 50-50 chance we get back to the low of yesterday, if not higher than that. So I think always in bears they get out above here or here or certainly on this close and then we're clearly always in long uh, bears this happens a lot where you'll see we break above the high and sell off but the reality is strong enough breakout for at least a second leg up so I would not sell out of I would not buy I would not buy back I would not get out of the long or sell out of the long here or below this low, maybe if it closed on this low, but again, right at the moving average. Worst case, we may come down to here, 50% pullback. I still think we'll get a second leg up. So, always in long. You know, if you do get out, you've got to get long again. Maybe above this bar or above here, but I would not get out at all. Then we got the strongest looking bull bar of the move. And I think a lot of always in bulls would get out, especially after the bad follow through. So, you know, probably out, get out below here, maybe below here, but if you do, you gotta buy again above here or above here, stop down here, maybe here. And decent chance we'll test. When we get this, decent chance we'll test up to a close of today or yesterday because usually when you get a gap down, the close is important because. It signifies wrong wrong day here. There we go. It's important because it shows you know that's all day that's all higher time frame traders really care about is the close. So so if we're paying attention to it, it's a sign of strength if we can get back to the close. And you can see we only went looks like three ticks above the close so anyway a strong breakout probably strong enough for a second leg up so you know I wouldn't get out of the short there or long and if you do you got to get the long again maybe on this close but not really good it's not really that great to get out below probably better to get out if there's three decent sized bear bars but this is not strong enough then we got our second leg up and you know if I didn't get out below here I'd get out below here certainly very big move on the day. You're probably not going that much further above the uh, close of yesterday. And I just called it a day in terms of I, w I wouldn't take any more longs. Then we started selling off. I thought the bears had potential right here. But the biggest, the biggest problem the bears have faced all day is it's not climactic. It is and it isn't. You know, here, look at the pullbacks. Bear breakout, three, you know, three bar pullback, bear breakout, few bars sideways, bear breakout, 
we only went sideways here, and then we sold off again. It's barely went sideways for a few bars, sold off again, sideways for a few bars, sold off again, then we rallied strongly. Look at today. Went up, went sideways, went up, sideways for quite a few bars, you know, at least 10 bars. Broke to the upside again, sideways for at least 10 bars. Broke out again, again, sideways for at least 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bars. And, you know, that sideways, it reduces the exhaustion that the bulls are facing. It's kind of like on the Euro. Uh, that's not the Euro. You know, spike channel, spike sideways, sell off with bad policy or sell off bad policy. Or probably will test, you know, this low at some point. That's the Euro Canadian dollar 15 minute chart. GoPro, uh, I don't remember why I was looking at that. I thought it was kind of neat. I think someone was talking about it on YouTube or something. Uh, you know, maybe we found the bottom. I don't really know. I don't have a lot to say about GoPro. Here we go. Here's the Euro dollar. So 60 minute chart. We've just been selling off, and it, you know, Al. If you looked at Al's uh, analysis this morning, he he talked about it, you know, bear channel, bear breakout, possible measuring gap, but we got a sell off, bad policy, another sell off, bad policy, another sell off, but the best looking bear bar, climactic. It's climactic because you're not going sideways for that long. You know, you're selling off sideways, selling off. And then look at look at here. Look how tight this channel is. Here, there's no real pause in the move. So if I go to today and I get a 15 minute chart. You know, it's not, it's still climactic, just not as climactic as this day. So that, that's why I thought for one reason, you know, that was a problem for the bears and the gaps were staying open. And you can see bears have potential, but then they got bad follow through and this, you know, sideways more likely probably buyers below, which we did have buyers below ultimately. And you can see bulls buy this low, they scale in lower, scalp out. Clearly, we closed the gap, then went sideways. You know, maybe Globex session closed this gap here. You know, just kind of going sideways. Not really a lot to say. Uh, you know, best trades of the day. You know, buying. You know, pick pick your choice. Just use the wide stop. You know. Someone asked a comment about, I guess it was Al's website, and they said they, if I can find it, I think it was over here. You know, they said that they were, they went short below this bar, betting on a double top, and they got stopped out, you know, somewhere over here. They got stopped out above the bar, and like a, he said, Sorry, I keep yawning. I get kind of tired. They said they shorted below here, stopped one tick above, immediately got stopped out, and then watched it just sell off the rest of the day down to here. And I'm sure they ran off, just thinking, you know, you know, how did that happen to me? How did I get out just right at, you know, basically the height of pullback? That's why you use a wide stop. You know, if you're taking the short, if you put your stop one tick above, it's very low probability. Put your stop way up here, much higher probability. And usually, a wider stop's better. Almost always. So, trade small if you have to. I thought crude oil was really interesting today. I didn't trade it today, but, you know, it was still very fascinating to watch. Sell off, sideways few hours, possible final flag. You know, we may test back up to these, you know, stops up here. Five minute chart. You can see. We rallied up, rallied up. You know, some sort of big, big report bar. And, you know, we just sold off. And then this is the problem with, with big report bars, you know. When I mean, you get a breakout, especially big, big bars, it's usually best to wait for follow through because a lot of times, more often, you know, enough times, maybe 50-50, you get a bear breakout, 
bad follow through and it de it's a reasonable buy it closed on a tie so if a bear sold this they're probably going to get out above this bar aggressive bulls will buy or they wait for three consecutive bull bars and if they do very high probability so this kind of goes into risk some traders only you know they only see buying here and stop down here because the risk is smaller when they when they see three bull bars in a row right here you know this close this close this close they think to themselves you know if i buy this close that's 49.81 to you know 49.36 that's almost 500 dollars per contract you're right it is but what are you gaining with that you're gaining probability you know the probability is so high if you buy here stop down here the probability is very very good that you'll get to here you know it's at least I'd say it's at least 50 maybe closer to 60 percent because if this is a failed breakout usually the high of the breakout is a target you know and it's pretty high we'll get to here so think about that you buy this close at 49.81 your target is 50.34 so that's, you know what, $400. And your actual risk probably won't be 500. And if you look, if you bought this close, 81 to 75, you had to risk less than $100 per contract to get a reward up to here. So, you know, just something to remember. But you have to trade small in order to get that. So I hope this video finds value in some way for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask, you know, in the comment section below. And I hope everyone's had a, a great trading week so far this week. And the best advice I could give for last minute would be to simply, number one, work on consistency. And the easiest way to work on consistency is number one, Trading small, we all, you know, the less pressure you have in terms of risk, the better you'll do. And other than that, just work on consistency. It just takes time. All right, hope everyone has a great evening or morning, depending on where you are. Thanks.